Hey guys, I'm James Tate with Atlas Gunworks. Today we're out at the range with our Athena. We've got a little red dot on it and we're gonna do a little demonstration on perfect return to zero. And then we're gonna take you back to the house and show you in the shop just how we set up our guns to achieve that. All right, so we just shot our two drills that I use to find my perfect return to zero and tune these guns in. We shot the head box first, so that's where we'll start. You can see that I've got a bunch of shots stacked right on top of each other here, all touching. And when we shoot this drill, we wanna start with a slow cadence and gradually build that cadence up in speed so that you're only pulling a shot when you see the, the dot or your irons settle into the A zone and you're getting an accurate shot. And that's exactly what we're talking about. We got 10 shots inside the A zone, seven yards at a relatively quick cadence. We then changed mags and went into the A zone in the chest portion of the target. What we're seeing here is one sight picture for two shots. So it's a double or a double tap, however you want to call it. But the important thing here is we've got about an inch, inch and a half deviation at seven yards. This is the type of performance potential that we want to get out of our guns. This is letting me know that the springs in this gun with my ammunition and my grip are working together. So let's go back to the shop and I'll show you how we do it. All right, guys, now that we're back at the shop, we're going to jump into these guns and show you how we uh, change springs around and different uh techniques to get these guns to run consistently reliably and at a peak performance um, sustainably um, so it's not just gun tuning there's actually some mag tuning that goes into it and how your bullets sit in the the stack in the magazine to feed in uh, so that you get reliable feeds and everything else um, but we're going to jump right on into it and i'm going to move you guys over here to the side so you can see a little bit better what we're doing and uh, kind of explain everything to you step step by step and show you how i set up my guns before i ever go to the range all right guys, so before we get into mag tuning um, and setting up your magazine so that you have the proper angles and everything feeds correctly, first we're gonna talk about Loctite. Um, these guns, they go through a lot of abuse, whether your optic is uh, slide mounted or maybe something like this Chaos where it is frame mounted. Uh, there's still a lot of vibration and a lot of wear and tear on these on these small bolts and, and fasteners. Um, so you wanna use Loctite, but the thing is you wanna use Loctite uh, correctly because if you don't, you can, you can really damage some stuff. So these little fasteners, it doesn't take much to over torque them and strip them out either for installing them or for removing them. So what we're gonna do real quick, just to give you guys an example, this base plate that mounts directly to the slide, this is where I would use red Loctite. The reason I would do that is because red Loctite is heat resistant. So the slide that builds up, excuse me, the heat that builds up in the slide, it's gonna resist that, it's not gonna break down as fast and it's gonna hold this base plate on really tight. Also, I'm not worried if these get a little stuck in there, I can use a heat gun um, or something like that to, to really heat this up and break down that Loctite without worrying about messing something up in the electronic circuit boards and stuff inside of this optic. So when it goes to installing the optic onto the, the base plate, I'm gonna use the blue Loctite. Simply said, like, like we were talking about, we don't wanna be putting a lot of heat uh, into this, this optic with a, a heat gun or anything else like that. The most amount of heat we wanna use is something like a hair dryer, um, which is effective on the blue Loctite. If this optic were mounted on this Chaos to my side here, I would do the same thing. The screws that go into the optic up here, have blue Loctite on them. The screws that hold the mount onto the frame have red Loctite. Another place where you can use red Loctite is on this Chaos, I have an extended magazine release button. Um, you can see on the Athena, I do not, but on this Chaos, I use red Loctite there as well. So make sure you're using Loctite appropriately and you're not using the wrong Loctite for the wrong parts. All right, guys, now we're gonna talk about some magazines. One of the things I want you to understand is usually the most common failure that you're gonna see in a 2011 or even a 1911 platform is a failure to feed. The majority of the time, this failure isn't actually a firearm related failure. It's a magazine related failure. So in order to figure this out and get this tuned up the right way, what I like to do is use a micrometer and we're gonna measure in three spots. One being here at the very aft or rear portion of the mag lips, one here at the front portion, and then one just a little further forward in the creases. So I take three measurements from three different positions 
and that allows me to understand how these maglips are opening and closing and if they're more open or closed in the front or the rear. That's important to know because it changes the way the bullet sits on the top of the stack to feed into the barrel. And it changes depending on if it's if it's more closed up, it shoves that bullet down and makes it lower. So it's going to impact lower on the feed ramp, which can cause a failure. And if it's too far open, it's going to nose up into the, the top of the chamber and it could uh, lock up your slide and cause a failure. So a way you can adjust that, you use your mag pliers that you get from Atlas and you can open these up. Or if you need to close it up, if you open it too much, you can take some dowel rods like these, put it in the crease in the line on the mag body. And then you can take these steel dowel rods, put them in a vise like this, close it down real quick. It doesn't take a whole lot and close up those angles, make everything fit a lot better. All right, so we just talked about mags and how to alter the mag lips in order to get your angle right. This is a magazine that I've already tuned and I have a little trick that I use to test it. And this is something that you can do at home before you ever have to go to the range. I do suggest using dummy ammunition like this that doesn't have any primers in it. We wanna make sure we're being safe. What you do is you can either take your gun apart or just open up the slide and lock it to the rear. Take a Sharpie like this and color in your feed ramp. What we're gonna do is load this magazine in here and we're gonna run a few rounds through it. When these rounds cycle through and feed into the bore and the, and the barrel, they're gonna leave a little mark in the Sharpie and you're gonna see just where they're impacting to know if you have your angle set up correctly. Once you get your angle correct, I suggest writing it down so you have those measurements and you don't forget them. Let's go ahead and test it out. All right, so we've cycled a few through there and I'm gonna go ahead and take this gun apart. I'm using the Chaos for this because it has a retained toolless guide rod. So it makes it a little quicker for takedown, just for demonstration purposes. And just like that, your guide rod comes out in a toolless setup. All right, so this is the barrel that just came out of that Chaos. And now I can show you guys exactly where my bullets are impacting on the feed ramp. Anything below the halfway line or the 50% line, I consider bad. If it gets too high and it's impacting all the way up here on the very crown of the feed ramp, I call that bad also. I want them to be ideally right around the 75% mark if this is 50. So you can see here clearly that the bullets are impacting just above the 50, around that 75 range, and then riding right up into the bore the way they're supposed to. All right, guys, moving right into recoil management, we want to talk about recoil springs first. That's the biggest key component to controlling the recoil and getting that perfect return to zero. So something you want to know first is guns come cut in different sizes. This uh, Chaos, although it's a 5-inch gun, it's stroked, so it really takes a 4.6-inch spring. This Athena is a 4.6-inch gun. It was designed specifically around 9mm, so it's a little shorter to save weight. So I want to show you guys the improper way to install a spring. So you can see this spring comes all the way back. However, during recoil, this spring cannot compress all the way. So you can see that I've got a good two-tenths of an inch, quarter inch gap there, roughly, that the spring is actually sitting on itself, and that's called coil bind. So not only am I losing the effectiveness of the spring itself, but I'm actually taking away room that the slide can cycle, which can also cause malfunctions, either failure to eject, failure to extract, and so on. This is a 4.6 inch spring in a 4.6 inch gun and you can see here clearly that as i compress this the spring comes all the way down and the shock buff sits on the bottom of the slide the way it's supposed to so you need to make sure that your guns have the correct springs in them to operate correctly the other important thing to note about springs they get mass produced from manufacturers with a plus or minus tolerance so when you order your springs from an outside company they might be ordered at just say seven pounds and actually be shipped at six and a quarter pounds or even lighter or all the way up to seven and three quarter pounds or maybe heavier. Depending on what that company's quality control rules say, you could get something completely different than what you wanted. One of the great things I liked about Atlas that they did this year is they came up with a spring tuning kit. So you can get them in either a 4.6 inch variation or a five inch. They come color coded, they're already tested. They know that, hey, this white spring is exactly what we say this white spring is before they send it out. And the color coding makes it really easy to go through the bag and say, I need this spring or that spring. And then once you figure out the springs that are appropriate for you to get your muzzle to return to zero and not return high or low, you just order that specific color and that specific length and you're off to the races. 
All right, guys, last thing we're gonna talk about is finishing up and wrapping up on these recoil springs. We already talked about finding the right uh, size recoil springs and knowing the difference between a four, six and a five inch recoil spring and how coil bind can affect us. But how does the rest of the recoil spring work? Well, the heavier a recoil spring is, it's gonna slow down the slide moving to the rear. But we do know, thank you, Sir Isaac Newton, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Therefore, if we slow down the slide to the rear, the equal and opposite reaction is we're gonna speed it up on its way forward. If you speed it up too much, just that right there will happen, and it's called muzzle dip. You don't want this, right? Most guns out there, people run a heavier recoil spring than what's really required, and they create muzzle dip. This slows down accurate follow-up shots. We saw that at the range shooting a head box, and just how important it is to be able to shoot accurate follow-up shots, and sometimes at speed. So you wanna find that perfect recoil spring that's in the median between too heavy and too light. If you go too light, what happens is the slide comes back a little too fast, the gun recoils, and as it slows, uh, closes, it's gonna be a little slower, carry less momentum, and the gun's gonna return high. This is what we call a high return. We wanna find that perfect zero, and that's what Atlas is known for. If you find yourself in the weird predicament that does sometimes happen where just using numbers for reference, say a seven pound recoil spring is too little um, and the gun's returning high, but an eight pound recoil spring is too much and the gun's returning low, there's another little trick that you can do to help yourself out. We're gonna resort to the main spring. The main spring puts pressure on the hammer strut, which in turn puts pressure on the hammer itself. So most guns come with a 17 pound hammer spring or main spring. You can run that up to a 19 or sometimes even need it a 21 pound hammer spring. What happens is this is the one way you get away without having an equal and opposite reaction for recoil control. You run this hammer spring up with more pressure and it soaks up more energy from the slide in order to reset the hammer. That allows you to get away with a lighter recoil spring so that you're not slamming the slide back forward and dipping because you're taking away some of the recoil energy in the hammer itself. All right guys, hopefully you found this video useful. Now that we know a little bit more about recoil springs, the correct fitting of a recoil spring, how it correlates with a mainspring, uh, Loctite, mag tuning to get consistent, reliable feed, hopefully you guys can capitalize on the peak performance possible out of your firearm. While I've got you, don't forget to go to the Atlas website. You can pick up one of these awesome premium toolkits, maybe some mag pliers, parts, whatever you need, mags, all of that is available on the Atlas website. But until next time, we'll see you out on the range.